Hey everyone, welcome back to our tutorial on creating a set of headphones within Gravity Sketch. In our last video, we started creating this pill shape and walked through some of the initial intricacies of creating a more precise and advanced modeling workflow. This time we're going to continue that modeling workflow and we're going to start by finishing up this outer shape that we've already started on. A quick tip before we get started, every time I'm about to change an object, I like to duplicate it upward and keep it as a kind of history of where I've been. That way, if I screw something up, I can always revert. But in this case, we're going to start by going back into the surface, and I want to separate out that guide that I created, really this surface that's kind of wrapped around the inside edge here. So I'm going to go back to my merge and separate, and once I'm in that tool, I'm going to slide to the right or left on my thumbstick. Doing that changes from the merge tool to this red tool, which is separate. Now I can hover that over my different surfaces and click with my index trigger on my drawing hand to kind of select the surfaces that I want to separate from the rest of that body. Then when I click that blue check mark, now that has been completely separated from the rest of my surfaces. So I can use this guide again without having to rebuild it, use selection to scale it inward and kind of move it to the right spot. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can use this same pill shape as kind of the bottom part of that strap or band that goes across the top of the head. So I'm using that pill shape to get a nice primitive to move forward with. But I'll go into edit mode on that object and delete out this back end because I'm only really worried about that lower portion of the pill shape and this top portion has to extend to form the rest of that band. Now that I have that outer edge of that band, I'm just going to turn on edge loop selection mode and I'm going to do a quick dirty way of just copying and pasting this whole edge inward to kind of fill in all that gap. I can add some edge loops in here to clean up some of that weird surface that's resulting from that and edit my subdivision level to make sure it's reading correctly. Because that's a flat surface there, I can get away with a little bit of weird topology. And I'm going to do the same thing on this inner portion of the other shape. So because I just want that to be a flat all the way across, I'm going to delete out this inner edge so that it doesn't have kind of a dip down and in. And then I'm just going to duplicate and pull inward until all those points snap. There's definitely better top topological ways to do this, but because it's a flat surface, I can get away with this approach. I'm just going to add in another edge loop here as well to make sure that's a nice sharp edge in my radii is what I want it to be. And in this case, I might change the color a little bit to make it easier to see, a bit of a darker gray. And now I can see that my two pieces are kind of coincident, but visually they're inhabiting the same space. That little bit of a lip that I see is making it read as an independent separate part. So I'm going to just grab and pull out all of these points to build out those few edge loops that I need to get that arch in the rest of my headband. And I might go in here and kind of just tidy this up, add some new edge loops, and pull it all out to give myself that portion that I'm going to need when I move that mirror moving forward. I might add one more edge loop in here just to tighten that up and make it nice and sharp. But really, as far as the band goes, that's all I'm gonna need before I move these back to a different mirror plane. For the time being, I think it'll be better to focus on the rest of the ear pad and kind of that connecting piece that I had modeled out before. So I'm going to go back in here and pull out this nice primitive pill that I have for the rest of the speaker. And I'm going to do the same workflow we did in the beginner tutorial. I'm just duplicating that geometry and making use of what I've already built. So I'll delete out all of these pieces and vertices that I don't necessarily need. Turn on my auto select edge loop to delete out entire edge loops. And in this case, it's going to be pretty simple. All I'm trying to do is just change that color, move it back up here. And I'm going to do the same thing I did in the beginner workflow, but in a little bit more precise way. I'm going to go in here, add an edge loop, turn on my auto select edge loops, and this time use a selection tool to make sure that when I move and scale that specific edge loop, it's going to happen uniformly around that pivot point that is my gimbal. So in this case, I can grab that pivot point and move it closer to the origin so that I know it's all scaling uniformly around the center point. But when I move that in, you can see we get a little concavity in that and it's starting to look pretty good. And next, I'm just going to continue that kind of duplicate, move, edit, and reuse geometry. In this case, I knew that I wanted a nice cut line for that pill shape uh, kind of on the inside of that band. So I'm just duplicating that piece that I just made using that pill shape to its fullest extent, making sure that it's aligned across that mirror plane. And in this case, obviously, it's a much longer pill. So I'm going to go back into edit mode on this object, 
increase my selection sphere and just kind of smart move that upward to align with where I wanted the rest of that uh, part line to actually be shown at. I'm also going to get a little bit of thickness to this line just so that it reads as a black gap uh, that would be that part line between those two pieces. And from here on, it's a lot of that same workflow, taking geometry that you've already made that you've built out to be pure in one way or another. In this case, it's that cylindrical cross section of that pill shape, duplicating it down, keeping that same edge line, deleting out unnecessary geometry, and then using that to build out everything else. So here, I'm just duplicating out that edge loop, pulling it down, resizing it, and kind of building out a simple pad for the ear. But we're in an interesting situation right here where I can't quite see up and underneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my tool settings and change it so that I can rotate myself to look that way. I just go to settings, sketch aid, and turn off vertical lock here. Now I can flip myself all the way upside down in the room. Vertical lock is something I like to usually keep on just to keep myself oriented and prevent motion sickness. But especially if I'm in a situation like this where I need to look underneath, that's when I'll turn it off. And another thing to call out right here is that I'm resizing my selection sphere so that I'm only selecting the points that I want to. Through that process of kind of manipulating and scaling this portion, I lost a little bit of that perfect pill shape. So I'm just going in here and kind of manipulating these points to make sure the inside of that ear pad is the shape that I want it to be. If that sphere shape is a little bit too difficult to select, I can hold down my grip trigger while selecting nothing and push my thumbstick right or left to change between a sphere and a cube for my selection. In this case, I want to move a lot of these points at once, so I'm going to go into my cube shape, and that'll make it just a little bit easier to grab these points than it was with the sphere. And all things considered, I'm pretty happy with that pad, so I'm going to move back into vertical lock mode now that I don't have to see underneath it and I want everything to be oriented upright. So I'm back into vertical lock now. And looking at this model, I'm pretty happy with all the local symmetry that I've built. So I'm gonna grab it all and group it with that purple button. And then using the selection tool, I'm gonna to move it back to the position it was originally in. So you'll notice because these mirrors are touching and are baked across that mirror plane, when I move them, they become a local mirror. So I can move this larger portion back into place and bake that local mirror and then return on mirror so that it goes across that global mirror once again. So this is a little bit of a strange workflow for people who are new to the program, but you get used to it very quickly. I'm just moving this portion back to where it was originally. And basically now I can go in, grab that object, and I can click bake mirrored on these individual objects. Bake mirrored is gonna turn that local mirror that we had currently into a fully mirrored object so that when we turn mirror back on, it resets across the global mirror plane. So this is a really good way to do local symmetry if you're working on automotive interiors, if you're working on local symmetry in product design or in consumer electronics like we're seeing here. But I'm just gonna go through and kind of do this for each of these individual components. So I'm gonna go in, make sure it's baked, re-mirror it. And when I do that with this strap up here at the top, I need to make sure I go in and connect these points and weld them across the mirror plane. That's going to make it render as kind of a smooth transition. And now is when I can go in and edit that curve by moving these points to make sure it's exactly what I want. And that's really the basics of this advanced workflow. We can take this and extrapolate it out to a much higher level of detail, but all of the essentials stay the same. We started with our initial sketch that was more or less our blueprint of what we wanted to model out for the rest of this design. We had it built across the mirror plane in this direction, but we took it and we turned that local symmetry to be positioned at the global symmetry level. In this case, I started with that pill shape on the outside. And in this model, I actually added in an extra little indent, but that's done in the exact same guide pill shape way that we built out everything else. So rather than walking through that all individually with the tiny little details, I wanna show you guys the overall theme of how it's all put together. But again, this is all still the subdivision surface. We just took that inside shape that we had duplicated out for the band in this last piece that we looked at and just extrapolated it down, built it out inward. And the band shape is built the exact same way, but we take that, build out the alignment in the guides, and then build out individual parts on top of that. So everything else that we add in terms of detail is built the exact same way. We have all of these guides, all these other pill shapes that we're just duplicating out 
and building out. And so long as we're duplicating that geometry, we can retain the same edge, which is really nice for these refined, uh, more finalized, render-ready models that we're building here in Gravity Sketch. But we're taking these individual parts and these guides and we're using them to build out the surfacing in between. So we take those individual parts and we refine them. So in this case, I just added a few more detailed pieces. I split up that band for an additional pill shape inside. I used my revolve tool to make that little button. Uh, all of this still is the same subdivision surfacing. I can still edit everything in the same way. I can use my selection tool. All of it is still able to be moved and edited and it's live geometry. So if we want to change anything on the fly, we absolutely can. But at this point, I kind of have all of these individual parts built out and I'm just duplicating them down, changing the colors so that I have a history of those parts like I talked about before. I've got the outer portion, the middle kind of meeting piece, the ear pad itself, uh, that button that I was talking about before, that's all just revolved geometry. And then once I take those parts and refine them, I'm kind of just sandwiching them back together, lining up those edges to where they were originally. And what I'm left with is a really nice, refined, well thought out assembly that we can think through manufacturing in this process. Uh, here, I kind of built out thickness to that strap and added a pad to it, all with the same subdivision surfacing tools. So just a logical continuation of what we just showed. In this case, rather than the cylinder primitives, I made some box primitives and added them in there to give a little bit of texture. I did a tiny little tag here that's just a simple subdivision surface with the quilt tool actually that we covered in the beginner tutorials. But all these little details, you can get as crazy nuanced with it as you want to. And obviously we can change the color, make it look better, make it look different, but I'm just sandwiching everything together and getting this assembly in point so that when I'm done, I can take it and move it back across the global mirror plane, bake those mirrors, and end up with something like we have down here at the bottom. So I'm just taking these points, and because I want that to be across that mirror plane, I'm just baking it, mirroring it, and then showing it here in kind of the final format. So this is a more refined model all in all. This doesn't really take a lot of time. I mean, all of these tutorials, uh, you can see I built out everything in the past 20 minutes in terms of the main form, and then spent probably 20 minutes to half an hour detailing it, and now what I'm left with is this cool example of a clean model. I even built this out to where the pill shape is able to kind of slot in and out for different animations of the pads, uh, conforming to different head sizes and different head shapes. So all of this is done in Gravity Sketch. We're able to follow that advanced modeling workflow that I just showed and get somewhere that is a pretty nice finalized asset. So in the next video, Obviously we covered a lot here in terms of modeling and finishing up that advanced workflow. And the next one, we're gonna talk about exporting, playing a little bit more with CMF, bringing in images, uh, doing texture maps, all sorts of fun stuff. So if you're curious about that next phase and kind of getting to that final presentation level, join us next time. But for now, I think we're all good. I'll talk to you guys next time.